All right, so check this out. The FGC and Twitter. That's a hell of an opener, isn't it? Been a lot of bullshit going on the past few months. But to be honest with you, the bullshit's been going on forever. I hate the FGC on Twitter. Fuck FGC Twitter. Real shit. And I'll tell you why. As a devs recently made a video entitled Bending Notes, the simplification of Guilty Gear, patterns past, present, and future. In this video, he argues that Guilty Gear Exert's simplification of Guilty Gear XX's system and character mechanics was overall positive, and in some cases actually more complex. Many of the comparisons he uses are dishonest, and many of the facts he cites are totally wrong. When faced with constructive criticism, he ignores it, and instead focuses on unconditional praise. This is not a healthy introduction to the Guilty Gear series for potential newcomers, nor is it a good first step to discuss simplified fighting games. This video will be full of granular details and technical information, and I hope it does not scare away people from playing older games and discovering them. I want to avoid contributing to the notion that you need to know what you're doing to play and enjoy a game. If there's one thing this video can help you do, it's to go out and pick up a game you've never tried before because you were worried about being bad or not understanding it. My name is Jack, and my gamer tag is Dragonfly. I play mostly at the University of Waterloo Fighting Game Club, and sometimes assist with commentary for our weekly brackets. I do not speak for the entire community. I am just hosting this video on their channel because it is a slightly larger platform, and because it would receive absolutely zero attention on my own channel. I started playing fighting games in 2017 with Guilty Gear Exert Revelator. Prior to that, I had tried to play Super Smash Bros. Melee competitively, but I found the execution grind unrewarding and the community unpleasant. Since 2017, I have branched out into other fighting games, but I do not consider myself more than a beginner in any of them, except for Guilty Gear Exert, where I consider myself a weak intermediate player. My fighting game experience is quite limited, and I am aware of that. I do not claim to be an expert. However, I do know enough about Guilty Gear Exert and Guilty Gear XX to know that much of what Azadev's claims in his video bending notes is either misleading or plain wrong. This video will be a compilation of errors and a general response to his video. I am not making this video because I enjoy getting angry on the internet. I am making this video because Azadevs has an audience of thousands of prospective Guilty Gear players who are excited for a new game in the series, and because these people deserve better than his video. They deserve videos built on substantial claims rather than lavish video effects and false comparisons. Claims and Errors this section documents the many incorrect factual statements as a devs makes throughout the course of his video. 1. Force Roman cancels were a one frame window in Accent Core and the window doubled in the next game, plus R. FRCs did indeed have a one frame window when first introduced in Accent Core. This was increased to a minimum of two frames in further iterations, with most FRCs being three or four frame windows. Some, like Faust's Pogo into Going My Way, are as long as 6 frames. The absolute value of 2 is not the same thing as a range from 2 to 4. When you say, a 1 frame window doubled in the next game, you are lying. 2. Slashback is a better instant block that leaves you vulnerable for 30 frames on whiff. Slashback is better described as a high-risk, high-reward defensive option to steal a turn back or to punish something that would be safe under all other circumstances. Slashback reduces block stun to a flat value, 3 frames, compared to instant blocking, which only shaves frames off the end of a move depending on attack level. In this way, slashback is actually simpler because you don't need to know the attack level of a move or care about it being grounded or airborne. These factors all affect instant blocking. Slashback cannot be performed as a reversal option, unlike instant blocking, which can be performed any time. Aerial slashbacks keep you in the air longer, similar to faultless defense, as opposed to instant blocking, which allows you to drop quickly. All of these effects, and more, combine to make slashback distinct from instant blocking, rather than a better version of it. You are wrong to say there is no strategic decision to be made. Furthermore, the risk and difficulty associated with the technique are inherently part of what balances it and prevents it from obsoleting others. In Street Fighter III Third Strike, parrying is more advantageous than blocking, but blocking is considerably easier. It would be stupid to say that the optimal approach says we should parry everything. Slashback is a bad, poorly implemented system mechanic that very few players use consistently, but not for any of the reasons you describe. 3. The battle-tested system predates Exert. This statement is a grammatical mess. 
Given the footage you show with Soul Calibur 3, I can only surmise your point is that meterless defensive options, such as the Soul Calibur series guard impact mechanic, which outclass everything else, can be unhealthy and unfun. Overall, I agree with this sentiment, but guard impact is considerably more forgiving than slashback, which invalidates the comparison. No plus R player has ever gotten into a slashback war. Charged Blitz combos added in Revelator were an improvement over Tap Blitz in Sign because they added new combos and gave players more options. I don't disagree with your sentiment, but you are being dishonest by not mentioning the enormous disparity in Blitz combo potential. If Zato wall splats with a successful Blitz attack, he cannot convert to a knockdown without spending 50 meter on his air super or doing precise shadow gallery combos. By comparison, Raven can easily use his anti-air command grab to scoop an opponent off the wall and either continue the combo or get a very good Okizeme situation. In my view, Charged Blitz is a poorly implemented mechanic because a universal system mechanic should not have such disparity in its use and application. 5. Some force breaks had unique hit properties, but their faster speed was most apparent. You can't say some force breaks had unique properties, hit or otherwise, when every character has at least one force break that fulfills a unique role within that character's kit. Even straightforward characters like Kai and Soul have force break moves that function as discounted supers. Just as a few examples, Faust has four. Two are improved special attacks, two are unique attacks, Aerial Pogo and the bomb follow-up to his scalpel Recca. Eddie has two. One is an improved drill, one is a unique move that completely refills his shadow gauge. The latter defines his pressure in tournament play. 3. Johnny has two, which are effectively a super move split into two halves, visually similar to his treasure hunt super in Exert. The second part of this move is the only way for Johnny to increase his mist finery level without using a coin. Testament has two. One is an unblockable version of his skull curse attack, and one is a unique attack he can use for abare or combos. Potemkin has two. One is an aerial version of his command grab that can be comboed into, and the other is a unique attack useful for abare or combos. YRCs make any move equivalent to a force break if you remove the time slowdown from YRCs and ignore the input eating and pretend the game is running faster and skip 10 frames and don't count the frame advantage given by some force breaks and ignore the unique force breaks that aren't improved special moves. <laughs> You serious? Do I really need to explain this? You remove or ignore the defining effects of a YRC in order to compare it to something that has neither of them. Perhaps you meant to say that YRCs generally make moves more powerful, in the same way force breaks do, but applied to whatever special move you want. I generally agree with this, but your presentation is so dishonest it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. 7. YRCs freeze you for 24 frames and your opponent for 34 frames. You also got your frame data wrong. YRCs don't freeze anything. They have 6 frames of startup for the initiating player and 18 frames of time slowing applied to the opponent. 8. YRC gives Guilty Gear Exert less total systems and a lower barrier of entry. I didn't say anything about this mistake when you made it before, but it's fewer systems, not less. I agree with your point, though. 9. YRCs are a high precision utility. Higher precision compared to what? The entire point of the YRC, RRC, PRC system in Exert was to enable players to RC at literally almost any time, which removes precision. YRCs practically double hit stun for a short time, and you expect me to believe they're somehow more precise than FRCs in previous games? 10. You can YRC in plus R. The only mechanic in plus R that resembles a YRC is a power-up obtainable in a single-player mode. You would not say that bombs are a system mechanic because they can be unlocked in Exert's MOM mode. You would not say that Kai has a super that resembles Sin's RTL because he has it as a boss character in Dizzy's arcade mode. 11. If we want to understand each force break and FRC, we must research over 300 different attacks. Executing most of them requires a dive into frame data. This is a lie and an insult to your viewers. You are implying a Street Fighter player cannot properly understand Ryu's EX Hadoken without diving into frame data. Anyone who has ever seen an EX Hadoken knows exactly what it does. It's a Hadoken that hits twice. A child could understand it. As a point of comparison, Hey, what does Anji's FB Rin do better than regular Rin? Oh, it's faster, does more damage, ground bounces for longer, and is plus on block. The above example applies to most force breaks in plus R. 
12. There is one YRC and it's universal. An exceedingly vague statement. The principle is universal, YRC during attack startup, but the execution is move dependent just like everything else and situation dependent to boot. You can't YRC if your opponent is in block stun or hit stun. And FRC only cares what frame of the move you're on, so in this way, it's simpler. Some moves in Exert can have their properties change completely by being YRC'd, such as Kum and Eno's 5D attacks, which become projectile mids, or Elfelt's JD, which grows a new downwards hitbox and can hit crouching opponents. This never happens with FRCs. All you ever get to do is cancel into a neutral state. Furthermore, the early tutorial doesn't discuss YRCs, and neither does Mission Mode. Maybe you meant the combo trials, but the combo trials don't explain YRC in any form of depth compared to RRC. 13. The 81 force breaks can be executed one way each, which you imply to be too many along with all the FRC points. You push the D button and input a special move command to do a force break. It's literally no different from choosing which version of a special move you want to do. Kai's projectiles. 236S. 236H. 236D. 236D. 4D. Souls Fafnir's. 41236H. 41236D. The idea this is too complicated is an insult. 14. You must consider how YRCs manipulate your opponent's frame data. They eat your opponent's inputs and prevent him from responding. There's nothing to consider. They increase hit stun to the point it's extremely easy to land any combo with a few minutes of practice. There's nothing to consider. Intellectual nonsense. This section exists to document the awful diction and dictation as a devs exhibits in his desperate bid to seem smart. 15. You can take your horizontal momentum into your jumping attacks, which lets you do combos you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. The same principle applies to neutral. This is what you expressed in your 45 second long section where you showed Soul doing one combo twice so the viewers could appreciate the fucking speedometer you worked very hard on. Thank you so much for making a bad analogy full of purple prose instead of stating something simply and letting us move on with our lives. 16. The nuance of throw timing is within 0.032 seconds of another throw. Who talks like that? Uh, so I thought that that was a little bit of like irony, but I think he just actually thinks that people talk like that. You meant to say the window for a throw tech is within 0.032 seconds of another throw. Throw clashes exist in the event of both players try to do something at the exact same time. People don't intentionally tech throws in Guilty Gear as a defensive option. Presenting it this way is wrong. 17. There is clear intention to obfuscate predictability with predictable systems. I, as much as, like, I, I was expecting it to be, like, horribly cringe, like he's constantly being goofy TM, it's, it's just, like, really, really bad fucking janky writing that just doesn't feel natural or good. You remind me of me in my 10th grade English class. You're not as clever as you think you are. You shouldn't describe the systems as predictable if their entire design goal is to remove predictability. A guts system behaves predictably on a single health bar, but it behaves unpredictably, or arbitrarily, which is the same thing in practice, across the entire cast. 18. Rev 2.1 changes made in January 2018 were experimental. Untrue, because many characters had the bare minimum changed to qualify as a balance patch, which is what players wanted from Arxis. Kai's Greed Sever was made slightly more annoying to combo from. Kai's Grinders had their hitbox slightly lowered, Soul received a small buff to run speed and Grand Viper movement speed, which enabled some new combos, but nothing crazy. Soul had changes made to his screen shake on Dragon Install PBB. Slayer's changes to his counter hit buff, such as the buff duration stacking from multiple bytes, or the buff timer pausing during super cinematics, read like bug fixes, not experimentation. While it is true that some characters were changed drastically in style or power, such as Raven and Johnny, the majority of the cast is fundamentally the same. A patch full of experimental changes would not have such small effects. It is likely the changes in Rev 2.1 were made with limited budget and time, because Arxis was juggling several projects prior to releasing the patch, which were competing for development time and resources. Arxis would have been finishing development on Dragon Ball Fighters at this time, and supporting it post-release. Arxis would have been entering development on Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. 19. 
various characters were rebalanced in two notable ways. And by various characters, you mean Bedban. He's the only character you describe in any sort of detail. 20. A timing window produced asymptotic results per frame. Pro tip. If you need to go to a different social media platform four days after the fact to explain what you meant, you were trying too hard to seem smart. Per frame doesn't mean depending on each frame. It means for each frame. This sentence is gibberish, just like everything else in this section. What you wanted to say here was, Bedman's task B had its acceleration changed such that it more consistently knocked down when comboing instead of OTGing. This is the purpose of the change. It's not experimental, and it's not the devs using some grand mathematical formula to fine-tune the corner case combo conversions of a low-tier character with far bigger problems. Mathematical functions like this are used all the time in computer programming, and video games are no exception. And for goodness sakes, the combo depends on distance, not timing. 21. Soul's Bandit Bringer wasn't changed. Did you even read the patch notes? 22. The final nail in the coffin is that you think the changes made to Raven's Ball were due to the devs wanting to change a special move with incentive to TK. Raven was a brain-dead character in every previous version of Exert, and the changes made to him in 2.1 were the final efforts of Arxis to change him into an interesting character with strengths and weaknesses like everyone else. They weren't perfect, because he went from a brain-dead character to a character with huge numbers of character-specific combos and Okizeme setups, and there are many janky things you need to do in order to get his aerial ball to hit people meaty. All of this can change as he gains excitement over the course of a match. It does so happen that Raven's TK ball is now generally better than his standing ball, but that is a secondary effect of the changes, not the primary effect. Raven's balance changes were break glass in case of emergency changes, and it shows. You have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Statement of character regarding Aze devs. At the start of this video, I mentioned that Aze devs ignored constructive criticism in favor of blind praise from his viewers. This is juvenile and will stunt his growth as a video maker, as you can see from the examples on screen. When someone presents you with a valid, legitimate piece of advice and presents it politely, your responsibility as someone who asked for feedback is to smile, nod, and say thank you. Even if you have no intention of following through with it, you should still appreciate that someone took the time to write something beyond a simple I love it or I hate it. No, that's too much, baby. That requires way too much A, communication, B, empathy, C, actual discussion, actual desire to communicate with a human being. Twitter's no place for that. It's much easier to just, hey, stand in your sinking boat, throw a rock at some other dude who's drowning. Why, would the, why the fuck would you even try to talk to him? Fuck that guy. This is childish behavior. You should not trust anyone who acts like this to be an authority on anything, much less highly technical and complex video games like Plus R. The final issue, however, is one I find the most damning. The influence this egregious collection of misinformation has over people who don't know any better. The slick production values, confusing language, and bewildering speed with which information is thrown at the viewer all contribute to a carefully crafted experience that is meant to convey exactly one idea. The old games you've never heard of are stupid and badly designed. Don't play or explore them, just be excited for the new pretty game that won't require you to jump through any hoops to find other players. Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. Normally, I would say this is not especially harmful. People have been stupid on the internet as long as the internet has existed. However, there are more than a few important and influential people being deceived by this video. For an example, let us use Tarkus here. For those of you who don't know, Tarkus is one of the driving forces behind the Dustloop and Mizumi wikis being updated. If you've visited those websites recently and seen a roadmap section at the bottom of the page, you have him to thank for that. Tarkus also edits the wiki. He edits the wiki more than anyone else I've ever seen. There are more than a thousand individual changes since May of this year, all thanks to him. Tarkus also thinks this video full of lies is the best gear content. Do you see the problem here? Despite what this video may have sounded like, I want to make it clear that I have never held a grudge against Aze Devs. I have greatly enjoyed his previous videos because they have been short, simple, and to the point. However, I think this video, with all its ostentatious presentation, needlessly flashy video effects, and terrible diction, is a turning point for him as a video maker. If he continues down this path, I fear he will become just another content creator, 
screaming into the void and hoping to be picked up by the YouTube algorithm. It is a sad fate, and I have seen it consume people's lives. Have you ever actually listened to a so-called video essay before? Have you ever actually looked at one of them? They're often jumbles of unnecessary visual formatting and transition effects. One of my personal favorite examples of this is Funky's video, TF2's State of Specialists. It is an excellent video held back by its formatting. Almost every single transition has three or four visual effects where one would suffice. If Azadevs continues to proceed as he is now, his videos will be flashy and sound professional, but I doubt they will say anything of substance. Hopefully this video has been the opposite, and hopefully I have been able to quell the spread of misinformation and encourage some productive discussion in the Guilty Gear community in particular, and potentially the FGC in general. If you watched this entire thing, then from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I welcome all feedback.